Okay. Um, Frank, uh, Buddy and I are splitting this, so if at uh, 20 minutes. Ten minute, oh, you want the whole, how do you want to do it? Well, at the 20 minute mark, stop me. Put the five minute, minutes. put the five minute mark up. Okay. So in Minnesota, we have, we have now restricted the use of phosphorus fertilizers in landscapes. Okay, and so what that means is there's a couple exceptions to this law. And those, the, those exceptions are a tissue test or a soil test performed within the last three years indicating a need for phosphorus fertility. That's the first exception. The second is if you're establishing a turf via seed or sod and you have one year to apply phosphorus fertilizers during that establishment period. And the last is the use on a golf course under the direction of a person who has participated in an ongoing training program to apply phosphorus fertilizers. Somebody had mentioned that their state was looking at um, actually having a fertilizer certification program. So we've done that um, to some extent, really focusing in on the uh, golf market. Uh, we've got about 450 people that have gone through it in the last three years. Um, so it's been a pretty uh, successful program. It is illegal, we talked about this earlier too, it is illegal to apply phosphorus or any fertilizer to an impervious surface. You know, the, the uh, fertilizer police frequent uh, my neighborhood with the uh, crunch, crunch, fr crunch underneath your feet as you're walking around. That's a little sarcastic, but there is a, pest, a petty misdemeanor associated with the uh, misapplication of a fertilizer to an impervious surface. So this is, this is who signed our law um, into effect. Jesse the body, yeah. He walked around the Capitol like that a lot. And uh, so uh, this went into effect January 1st, 2005, statewide. Um, a year prior to that, in 2004, it was just metro-wide for the eight counties around the metro area of Minneapolis and St. Paul, and then it went statewide in 2005. What Marty and I are going to focus in on today is, is this issue really right here. You know, you've got these inputs into the system, inputs of phosphorus into the system, and we're really looking at this runoff of water into surface water bodies. But keep in mind that although we're talking about these issues here, Here's what's happening in the soil. And it's a very dynamic process like the nitrogen that Carl and Kevin just spoke about. So we have to keep that in mind that there, are, there is the chemistry going on below the surface, uh, but we are gonna focus in today on this issue right here of runoff. Okay, so, uh, and I was also glad to know that I wrote my objectives correctly based on my English lesson this morning. Um, to evaluate the effect of grass clipping management and fertilizer inputs on phosphorus runoff from home lawns. That's objective number one for the research that I'm gonna talk about. The second is to evaluate the ability of management practices to mitigate chemical transport phosphorus with rainfall runoff. Um, because of time, we're really just gonna focus in on these two objectives. There's, there's a list of sub-objectives that certainly lead up to this, um, but we're gonna focus in on these two. So the first management strategy that we were trying to evaluate what the impact of phosphorus runoff was, was comparing just two different aerification techniques. The use of a solitine aerifier versus a hollowtine aerifier. The hollowtine actually pulling the cores to the surface. The solitine actually just punching holes into the surface and not actually pulling soil back up. What is the impact between this aerification strategy and this aerification strategy? on phosphorus runoff. This research was done on creeping bent grass, managed as a golf course fairway. We actually simulated the rainfall event to, after the application of the fertilizer to see what happened from the runoff perspective. Um, we have a couple of graphs here. Two days after treatment, after fertilization, and 63 days after. And we've got you know, a couple of different graphs here. One looking at cumulative uh, runoff volume based on either solid time aerification or hollow time um, at two days and at 63 days. To summarize this, there was a 25% per, uh, percent reduction in total runoff volume using hollow time aeration two days after, and there was a 10% reduction 63 days after. So a total reduction in volume of runoff which as Carl pointed out, is very important to understand this whole volume issue in respect to nutrient loading. Marty's gonna hit on that topic a little bit later too. 
from a nutrient standpoint, we were looking at soluble phosphorus, ammonium, and nitrate. We had a 49 and 60% reduction in soluble phosphorus and ammonium nitrogen uh, loss with runoff two days after the application of the fertilizer. And we had a 30% reduction of the soluble P and the ammonium loss 63 days after. There was no statistical difference between the nitrate um, on either sampling date, either two or 63 days after. So with the holotine aerification, we, we were demonstrating that this one practice, which is very common among turf grass managers, at least mitigated the loss of phosphorus fertilizers uh, to some extent, whether 49% um, or 30%, depending upon time after application. Okay, we're gonna jump now from golf courses to home lawns. And it seems as if this uh, what we've kind of been talking a lot about today relates more to the urban landscape, the home lawns. And so this next research study is looking at nutrient runoff from home lawn turf. And these were constructed as an urban subdivision. And that's one of the um, uh, things we wanted to be very careful about in construction of these plots, which was drive a bulldozer over the plots for two or three days, put an irrigation system in, and then sod it. Um, which is very typical of a suburban subdivision. We have a 5% uh, slope. There's three replications of these treatments across the, uh, the plots. The treatments themselves are no fertilizer at all. So since 2005, we have not put any fertilizer down. Uh, no phosphorus, so we only have nitrogen potassium. This would be your zero phosphorus fertilizer. We have a complete fertilizer applied at one pound of phosphorus per thousand square feet per year which would be a representative of our establishment rate, our recommendations for establishment. And then we have a complete fertilizer applied at the three pounds, which is what Bruce was saying before, um, very indicative of those that use a complete, like a 10-10-10 fertilizer. So at three pounds of N, you get three pounds of P. After 2005, we switched the rates back to management, not establishment mode, and those rates dropped to a third of a pound per thousand square feet per year on the low phosphorus rates and a pound total on the high phosphorus rates. So these are our four treatments. We had removing clippings and recycling clippings as another variable in this. So we had a total of eight treatments, three replications, we had 24 plots. Um, we get a lot of snow, and we also get a lot of frozen ground. Minnesota and the upper Midwest is basically impervious, impervious across the entire landscape for four to five months, sometimes a year. So we get a lot of runoff that occurs from these surfaces. We can get a rainfall, like Kevin was talking about, in the end of January uh, in Minnesota. That ground's frozen. Sometimes our, we freeze down to eight feet in our soil. Um, so we have a lot of frost and a lot of frozen soil and impervious surfaces throughout the year. Um, we're going to show some graphs now. We're gonna I'm just going to hit the high points. One of, the, one of this is the effect of, of fertility on soil phosphorus in the zero to three inch soil layer. And what, what's interesting to me is that even with the no phosphorus fertilizer and the control, which is no fertilizer at all, we still get an upward trend of soil phosphorus over this two-year period. So we're still adding phosphorus to the soil, even though we're not applying anything. As we are adding phosphorus to the soil, when we are actually adding phosphorus to the system, either one of those rates. Um, when you get into the environmental stuff, I just want to summarize some of these other data that we collected. One of which is that these high phosphorus fertilizers in, um, inputs increase the soil phosphorus levels by 50%. Apply a lot of phosphorus fertilizer, you increase the soil phosphorus levels. Pretty simple. We have no consistent trend when comparing clipping management. At one point in time, I was a little bit concerned because the, the plots that we were recycling clipping started to trend to show more phosphorus runoff. And that concerned us from the paradigm standpoint of how we adjust homeowners' practices to actually removing clippings 
from an environmentally sensitive area. So what we found over this two year period, and this work will continue for another two years, is that there's really nothing consistent about clipping management. Fertilized 